Okay, I wanted to go over some functions of the Esheen E120 helicopter. The way I have it programmed into OpenTX Companion in the TX16S transmitter, but uh, I went ahead and put this together because there's another function that I wanted to demonstrate on the helicopter as well. I've added a bind uh, function uh, programming for this helicopter in the TX16S. Um, we'll demonstrate that and I'll show you that it's working. I've already updated the OpenTX model file um, that's available for download on our Facebook page. So the easiest way to get this programmed into your transmitter and have everything functioning exactly as I have, have mine functioning is to download the OpenTX model file from our Facebook page. It, um, it is a, it's a zip file that also contains an image file, not only the OpenTX model file, but also an image file of the model that you can use in your transmitter. The helicopter uses protocol E129 and the sub-protocol is C186. Now, I updated my uh, TX16S with the latest stable release of OpenTX and multi-module. So, I, I don't know if it's if that sub protocol is available in a in a previous release prior to the latest latest stable release. So, if you don't see the protocol E129 in the list, then you're pretty far out of date. If you've got E129 but you don't see sub protocol C186, then you need to update to the latest stable release. Okay. So anyway, let me go ahead and. Uh, turn on the transmitter and then I'll turn on the helicopter and the reason I did this is because I'm lazy. I'm lazy and I didn't want to have to go into the transmitter menu all the time just to press the bind button, you know. Alright, so we got a flashing light on it. It's waiting to be bound up. And as you can see it's not bound right now. So I'm going to hit the bind switch. And now we're bound to it. So. Yeah, now you can see. Okay, so we're bound up to it. That's the functionality that I added that wasn't there before when I first posted uh, the OpenTX model file for download. I wanted to I wanted to have that just because, like I said, I'm lazy and I don't want to go to the menu. All right, let me go ahead and turn this off. Now, this is going to be informational. It's not a tutorial. I'm, I'm not providing a tutorial on how to program OpenTX. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the four screens that I use to program all this functionality for this helicopter into OpenTX. I took screenshots of all four of the menu items that I use to do all my programming, which is inputs, mixes, logical switches, and special functions. Okay, so um, I'll bring up the I'll bring up the slides and I'll explain what you're seeing. But what you're going to see is screenshots of all of my settings in OpenTX Companion. All right. Okay, so slide number one, inputs. And um, in order to use the bind switch, I believe that you have to have bind on channel enabled uh, on the setup page. Okay, so uh, don't forget that. But on the inputs, the channel order is throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, T-A-E-R. What you'll see are my dual rates and my expo are listed on the input page. On channel 5, you'll see OKTL. Okay, that is the one key takeoff and land. And that is assigned to switch SF, that's Sierra Fox Trot. And it is a two position switch. That is the switch that I normally use for my throttle safety switch on my aircraft. Channel 6 is the emergency stop, and it is assigned to switch SH, that's Sierra Hotel, and it is a momentary switch. All right, so I think, I think that that's all the information that you need on the input page. For whatever reason, the uh, OpenTX companion does not list the sub-protocols available. It just list, listed the major protocol. But again, the sub-protocol is C186. Don't forget that. All right, so next slide is going to be my mixer page. All right, and so you'll see three different sets of dual rates 
and I believe Expo, no, maybe just dual rates, just dual rates for aileron, elevator, and rudder. Okay, there's three different sets for each channel, aileron, elevator, and rudder, to give you the same type of functionality you have with the stock transmitter with the speed modes. So, you know, the first set will be speed mode number one, the second set speed mode number two, and uh, the third set speed mode number three. And I have that assigned to switch SG at Sierra Gulf, and it is a three position switch. So, so by, by moving that sw three position switch to different positions, you can switch from speed mode one, two, and three. Okay, on channel 16, uh, most of these models that don't that don't auto bind when you when you uh, when you load the protocol, you know, in OpenTX, they listen on channel or the OpenTX uses channel 16 um, to use as a bind switch if you want to use it that way, which is what I did. So my bind switch is on channel 16. And it is assigned to switch SE, that's Sierra Echo. It's a three position switch. And so it ignores the center position on the switch. So when the switch is, my switch is all the way back in the default position. And if I pull the switch all the way forward, you know, to the third position, that's when it initiates bind. And uh, it references a logical switch L02, and uh, we'll get to that page in a minute, and I'll explain what L02 is for. But uh, and that worked. We demonstrated that before about the slides up. So you saw that the bind, the bind switch on channel 16 is working just fine. All right. So next set of slides. Uh, next slide is logical switches. Okay, L01 is used as my flight timer. I always have L01 set up as my flight timer. That, that is my default function for L01. And it references the throttle channel. And what it's stating in that, in that logical switch, that function, is that when it, the, the timer will only count down or count up, depending on if you're counting down or counting up, the timer will only move when the throttle is above minus 99. So in other words, you need to be applying some throttle in order for the timer to count down or count up. All right, L02 is my bind safety switch. So we just talked about binding on channel 16, and channel 16 was using L02. So this is where that's referenced. It references the throttle channel, and it will only bind if the throttle is below minus 99, in other words, and, and if the throttle is not all the way down at minus 100, then that, that bind switch will not work. It will not initiate bind. Um, that's just as a safety protocol, okay? It uses switch SE, uh, Sierra Echo, and that is a three position switch. Uh, and we, we spoke about that earlier, okay? Last slide, which is special functions. All right, so special function one, SF1, uh, is used as a timer reset and also as the emergency stop. My feeling was that I wanted to put it on the momentary switch. The momentary switch uh, is normally what I also use for resetting my timer. I, I I just assume that if I'm, if I'm at a point where I need to use an emergency stop to get the helicopter out of the air, I'm probably not worried about my flight timer. So, so that, that um, function serves two separate purposes, resetting the timer and as an emergency stop, it uses switch SH, that's Sierra Hotel, and that is the momentary switch. Okay, so that's, that's all the programming that I have in there. And it provides you with all the programming, all the functionality of the stock transmitter. You got the one key takeoff, the one key land. You can still, you know, start it up manually. So the the um, stick positions for for arming the motor and starting it manually work the same way as the stock transmitter. The way that you um, recalibrate the gyro works the same way. You pull the sticks down to the left, to the bottom, the bottom corners to the left, and that will recalibrate the gyro. 
Um, you have the emergency stop, you have a throttle timer function, which you don't have on the stock transmitter. You have a bind switch that you can use. You have a three position switch that mimics the uh, three speed positions of the button, slide button on the stock transmitter. So I think you have, you have all the functionality of the stock transmitter plus more functionality than that. So, so anyway, I hope for the people who had questions about how I had it set up in OpenTX, I hope that helps you out um, so that you can see everything. Bear in mind that if you have a different OpenTX transmitter and it doesn't have the same switches that I have on mine, you need to make a note of that. And so you will meet, you'll need to modify that and assign those functions uh, to your own switches if they're labeled differently or if the switches are in a different position because it's a different kind of transmitter. Maybe you don't have the exact same switches that I have on the TX-16S. So be aware of that. And other than that, I think that gives you guys all the information that you need to set this up, to program this helicopter into your transmitter. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the air.